Whether you have a child or not, most people understand that all young children are constantly learning. They are learning how to view the world, how to handle their emotions, how to appropriately respond to situations that make them happy, excited, upset, or angry. Sometimes, a lot of the time, children may respond to things in ways that simply aren't appropriate. But guess what? They still need to be taught and disciplined in a way that guides them down the right path. And in order to grow into a healthy, stable adult, children need guidance from their parents, older siblings, friends, and teachers. But in cases like this one, a child is robbed of that. Instead of being understood and taught what is right and wrong, he is expected to act as an adult. And instead of being guided towards the right behaviors, he is sent away and abused. And now, he is missing while his mother sits in jail without a care in the world for his well-being. This is the story of little Elijah Vu. Elijah Vu is a three-year-old little boy born to his mother, Katrina Bauer, and his father, Jimmy Vu. At the time, Elijah was living with his mother and six-year-old sister in Wisconsin Dells. Those who knew Elijah said that he was such a happy, sweet little boy who got dealt a really bad hand in life. One neighbor who lived near Elijah said that Elijah was just a happy-go-lucky kid who seemed to make the best of his situation. At the time, Elijah's mother, Katrina, was dating a man named Jesse Vang. According to Katrina, Jesse acted as the enforcer of the rules in their relationship. In November of 2023, Katrina confided in Jesse that Elijah was starting to act out of control and that she needed to try harder to control his behaviors. So, around that time, Jesse decided to step in and help Katrina out with disciplining the children and enforcing the rules. Now, although neighbors and those on the outside describe Elijah as a sweet, kind little boy, Katrina felt that he was very bad and his behaviors were just getting way too out of control for her to handle. So, during the month of February, Jesse helped out with disciplining Elijah a lot more than ever before. It got to the point where Katrina decided that the only way to help control Elijah was to send him away in hopes of teaching him how to become a man. You heard me right. At the ripe age of three years old, Katrina felt that Elijah needed to be so disciplined he needed to skip over all other important stages of development that every child goes through and skip right to being a responsible little adult. So by February 12th, 2024, Katrina decided to send Elijah off to live with Jesse in Two Rivers, Wisconsin, an almost three-hour drive away from the home that he knew and grew up in. She apparently had the plan to pick him back up almost two weeks later on February 23rd. Now, this wasn't the first time that Elijah was sent off. He had spent some time alone with Jesse before, but this was definitely the longest that he would be without his mother and in the care of her boyfriend. When Katrina sent Elijah off, she and Jesse discussed the limits of what discipline he could not use, but beyond what she said she didn't want to happen, she was fine with any other tactics he used. Examples she gave of the type of discipline she expected Jesse to enforce were praying, saying that he was sorry for his mistakes, and going over the rules in the home until Elijah had them fully memorized. Things seemed to be going relatively smooth the first week that Elijah was with Jesse. According to Katrina, she didn't want to see him that entire time he was over there because she was letting Jesse take the reins. But as we would soon find out, things were not going well in the home where Elijah was now forced to live. By around 7.30 a.m. on February 20th, 2024, Jesse reports that he woke up with his own son who had autism and helped him make breakfast and get ready for school before he got on the bus to go. At this point, he saw Elijah still asleep on the futon in the living room. By 8 a.m., Jesse woke Elijah up and the two of them ate some cereal for breakfast before he brought him into the bedroom with him to continue sleeping. Elijah was told not to play or have fun during this time. Jesse shut the door and fell asleep with Elijah locked in the room with him. 
But when Jesse woke up three hours later at 11 a.m., he found that Elijah was gone. Immediately upon waking up and failing to locate Elijah, he called 911 to report what happened. Shortly after, police responded to the call and took Jesse into the station for questioning. And it was during that interview where we find out a lot more about what Jesse was doing to discipline Elijah while in his home. Jesse started off the interview by confirming that Elijah is scared of him, but corrects himself to say that he respects him. He told officers that Elijah was at his house for punishment for his bad behaviors and wanted Elijah to understand that going home, his home, was a privilege for him. Elijah had been to his home multiple times over the course of that month, but this week, starting on the 12th, he was there full time, as we discussed earlier. When asked about what bad behaviors Elijah was showing, Jesse couldn't really think of anything specific other than saying that he got into things and wasn't potty trained, which if he isn't potty trained, I'm sorry, but that is his mother's fault for not properly potty training him. Other than that, though, he couldn't really think of any specific behaviors that would result in punishment. This stay was meant to be sort of a boot camp for Elijah, so pretty much the entire time he was there, he was in time out. He had one toy at the home, which was a toolbox, but he normally wasn't allowed to play with that or have any fun in any other ways. Jesse said that the main punishment while Elijah was there was to stand in the corner and face the wall. He would have to stand there for periods of one to three hours at a time, and while there, he either had to pray or say, I'm sorry, mommy. If Elijah tried to kneel or sit down, he is given an ultimatum of a worse punishment, such as having freezing cold water dumped on him. Jesse said that three-year-old Elijah was still in a diaper, which he changed at least once a day. That was what he said, which again is just horrible and so disgusting. How many three-year-olds do you guys know that only go to the bathroom once a day? That poor, poor baby. Jesse also told officers that Elijah was still bottle feeding, so at the time, they were trying to switch him to real foods. The type of food that Elijah ate included noodles, pizza, and cereal, but Jesse couldn't get more specific than that. He just gave general ideas of what Elijah ate, but nothing specific about the meals he liked or the meals that Jesse would prepare for him or anything like that. Which again, I want to pause to say that Katrina was expecting Elijah to act like an adult, yet he wasn't even being treated like a three-year-old. He was still in diapers and was still feeding from a bottle, yet he is expected to act like an adult with absolutely no guidance while still being treated like a baby. Make it make sense. Then, Jesse went on to explain more about what happened on the day and hours leading to his disappearance. On the evening of February 19th, Jesse changed Elijah's diaper before putting on the movie Ready Player One at around 8 or 9 p.m. But I guess Elijah wouldn't sit still and watch the movie, which is totally expected from a three-year-old who is being asked to watch a movie that is not age-appropriate for them, but I guess for Elijah, this was not okay. So, because he wouldn't watch the movie, Jesse put Elijah in punishment. He either had to stand in the corner or when Jesse wanted to lay down, Elijah had to stand next to the bed. He said that when he is forced to stand like this, Elijah gets pretty tired, understandably so. He said that on the night of the 19th, Elijah was forced to stand for around two or three hours. When he tried to sit, Jesse asked, do you want cold water? Which obviously... A three-year-old does not want freezing cold water dumped on them, so he continued standing. Jesse justified these punishments to the officers by saying he was fine. It's not like his knees are shaking and he's about to fall over. Jesse went on to say that he didn't want to be mean to Elijah, but he needed to teach him to be more respectful. He also said that even though he threatens the ultimatum of water and harsher punishments, he never actually follows through with them. That night, Jesse had drank three cans of beer and took a benzodiazepine to fall asleep. On the morning of Elijah's disappearance, once again, Jesse got up and got his own son ready for school while Elijah slept on the couch. By 8 a.m., he got Elijah up to eat breakfast. 
Jesse said that he did not change Elijah's diaper at that time because he was too tired. After breakfast, he told officers that Elijah had to stand and pray near Jesse's bed. He then closed the door and went back to sleep. Jesse stated that anytime he's going to sleep, he always makes sure to lock the front door, the deadbolt, as well as the chain lock on the top of the door. Not to keep intruders out, but to keep Elijah from leaving the apartment. Then again, as we know, by 11 a.m., Jesse woke back up to find that Elijah had left the apartment. Now, at this point, obviously, the things that we are hearing are highly disturbing. The things that they did to this little boy are just horrific. A three-year-old isn't going to learn that his behaviors are bad. He's just going to be confused why he's being punished for everything he does. He is not being given any actual guidance, so he doesn't know what behaviors are right or wrong. He doesn't know what behaviors are expected of him, so he doesn't know how to act. He just knows that he's going to be punished. This must have been so confusing for little Elijah. I also want to point out that Jesse willingly gave all of this information during that first interview. So that says to me that Jesse didn't think that any of this was all that wrong. So it makes me very concerned for what Jesse isn't telling officers. If this is the stuff he's willing to tell police, there has to be so much more going on that he knows he shouldn't disclose. After speaking with Jesse, of course, police went ahead and interviewed Katrina. She said that while Elijah was staying at Jesse's, she never saw Elijah and never visited the home in Two Rivers. She explained why she sent Elijah to stay with Jesse, which is what I've been explaining to you throughout this entire video. So police examined both Jesse and Katrina's cell phone to see if they could find anything suspicious in their texts, internet use, and location data, and to basically confirm what they were telling them. Using that, officers found out that Katrina was lying about being in two rivers between the dates of February 12th through the 20th. On February 13th, officers found text messages from around 9.30 p.m. where Jesse and Katrina are discussing Katrina coming over for sex. Jesse said that Katrina shouldn't see Elijah when she comes, so they should put Elijah in the bathroom while they have sex. By 10.12, Katrina texts Jesse that Elijah can just sleep in the car. By 11.45, Jesse tells Katrina that Elijah will be in the living room when she gets there, so she needs to be quiet when she comes in. About an hour later, at 12.39 a.m., now going into February 13th, Jesse asks Katrina to share her location so he can see when she's coming so he'll know when to move Elijah. According to location data, Katrina's phone arrives in Two Rivers by 2.27 a.m. Around that same time, Jesse and Katrina are messaging on Facebook back and forth, asking about whether she should turn the headlights of the car off and discussing how to keep the car warm when they take the keys out. By 2.40 a.m., she messages that she's going to turn the car off and then turn it back on, saying, it should stay warm for a bit, right? And Jesse responds, yeah, it will. Just as a reminder, it is February in Wisconsin, which is freezing cold. So if you leave your car off overnight, chances are the car will be below freezing by the next morning. By 3.13 a.m., Katrina's phone took a photo of Elijah sleeping. In the picture, Elijah had a blindfold over his eyes, and according to reports, he looks to have bruising on his jawline and the neck on his left side, as well as bruising to his upper arm. The photo was taken and then deleted off of her phone by 4.12 a.m. By 4.30 a.m., Katrina's cell phone records indicate that she left two rivers. So, the thought here is that Katrina arrived at Jesse's house around 3 a.m., they put Elijah in the car for a little over an hour while they had sex, and then brought him back inside. And of course, as you heard described in that picture, it appears that Elijah was being physically abused. And of course, both Katrina and Jesse knew about it and or were participating in it. By February 15th, there's another photo of Elijah, this time on Jesse's phone. In the photo, Elijah is standing in the corner and praying, wearing only a diaper, and the diaper looks completely full. 
On February 16th, phone records confirm once again that Katrina is visiting Jesse's home. She texts Jesse to put Elijah to sleep, then arrives to his apartment around midnight. By 12.30 a.m., now on the 17th, both Jesse and Katrina's phones appear to be moving around different areas in the city. Jesse goes to a bar by himself for a little bit while Katrina is out and about shopping at a local quick trip, both of which were confirmed by surveillance video. And on both of those videos, it does not show that Elijah is with either of them. The two are out until around 1.55 a.m., so it appears that Elijah was home alone that entire day time, so almost two hours. I do want to note that during the times that Katrina went to go visit Jesse, there was someone at home taking care of Katrina's daughter, but apparently they didn't care enough about Elijah or Jesse's other son for that matter to get a sitter for them. By around 5 a.m., Katrina leaves the area of Two Rivers and returns back home. Later that day, on February 17th, Jesse sends Katrina a message where he says he is angry at Elijah because he overfilled his diaper with poop and pee. It's not Jesse's fault for never changing the diaper, it's Elijah's fault for having normal bodily functions. So, because of this horrible mistake of going to the bathroom like everybody does, Jesse gave Elijah a cold shower. He told Katrina that Elijah is now clean, but he was scared. Again, I don't know what the whole thing is with cold showers, why he can't just give him a warm shower that's going to be more comfortable. Apparently, it needs to be cold so that he can punish Elijah for going to the bathroom. By February 18th, at around 4.36 a.m., Jesse messages Katrina, quote, I told you to trust me. I'm gonna make sure he hates me and being here. Katrina responds, I don't want him to hate you, just fear you. Jesse responds, it's okay. Someone had to be the bad person. Katrina replies, I know, but either way, he can fear and respect you. Jesse says, he did fear me, but he didn't respect me. Now I'm making him respect me. Using all of this information that we've collected up to this point, we can clearly see that neither Jesse or Katrina knew how to care for a three-year-old little child. They believe that his behaviors are because he needs to be taught to be a man through physical abuse, punishments, and neglect. Instead of teaching him and showing him the proper behaviors that they want to see. Based on the information that they have found up to this point, pretty much immediately after Jesse reported Elijah as missing, he was arrested and charged with child neglect and was being held on a $20,000 bond. Then, by the day following Elijah's disappearance, 31-year-old Katrina Bauer was arrested and charged with child neglect as well. By February 26th, she was given two additional charges of obstruction of justice due to the fact that she had lied about her whereabouts during the week Elijah was staying with Jesse. After these arrests, more information about both Jesse and Katrina's concerning histories has come out and it really shocked me to read. So back in November of 2015, so almost 10 years prior to this, officers responded to a hotel in Appleton after Katrina alerted hotel staff to a situation and asked them to call police. When they arrived, Katrina told officers that she was sexually assaulted by two men. She further explained that she was being used as these men's property and was taken to Minnesota and forced to perform sexual acts in exchange for drugs. One of the two men that Katrina reported was none other than Jesse Vang. At that time, he was charged with sex trafficking. Two months after this report was made, however, Jimmy Vu, Katrina's ex and Elijah's father, asked police not to investigate the case because I guess Jimmy was now protecting Katrina from these men. I guess there was some sort of power structure and Jimmy was alpha over Jesse. The sex trafficking charges were ultimately dropped, but he would end up being charged with conspiracy to distribute meth, which landed him some jail time. It's not clear exactly how long he spent in jail, but he was released by December of 2022. Now, by the time Katrina's first bail hearing came, her charges had been upped from child neglect to chronic child neglect. 
Prosecutors were now alleging that not only did she neglect Elijah, but her six-year-old daughter as well. At that bond hearing, Katrina's own mother, Jody, actually wrote a letter to the courts asking them not to release Katrina on bond. She said that she has known Katrina longer than anybody else given that she is her mother and that Jody has been the victim of Katrina's verbal and emotional abuse for a very long time. She says that Katrina has a long history of showing erratic behavior and of neglecting her children. She said that Katrina has contacts in other states that will be willing to assist her in evading police and fleeing her charges. As of right now, both Jesse and Katrina are still in jail and have not yet been able to post their bonds. It's been reported that when Katrina entered her not guilty plea, she showed absolutely no emotion and showed no concern for the well-being of her child. In the state of Wisconsin versus Katrina Bauer. Friday afternoon's court appearance only took about two minutes as Katrina Bauer's attorney we enter plea not guilty. entered that plea on behalf of her client. Bauer faces four charges, felony child neglect, two misdemeanors of obstruction, and a misdemeanor of child neglect pertaining to another child. And we just all kind of looked at each other and we're just like not guilty. Take it as you will. Court documents show Bauer, who lives in Wisconsin Dells, brought Elijah to Vang on February 12th to stay with him at his Two Rivers home. She wanted Vang to show the three-year-old how to be a man. February 20th, Vang reported Elijah as missing to police, claiming he woke up from a nap and discovered Elijah was no longer in his home. Since then, concerned residents like Godfrey have been looking for the boy. Me as a stranger and all these hundreds of other volunteers are out there looking for your son and we're on day 32 and still no Elijah. So, so yeah, I'm a, I'm a little bitter. Meanwhile, local law enforcement and FBI, as well as dozens of volunteers, including family members, have all teamed together to search for the missing three-year-old little boy. So far, they have combed through nearby waterways and a landfill in two rivers. They have used countless resources in these searches and have followed up on every lead and have asked the public to stay on the lookout. This video shows pictures of surveillance video of Elijah and his caretaker, Jesse Vang, just four days before his disappearance. Coming to us from Ross Auto Service in Two Rivers, Vang and Elijah's mother, Katrina Bauer, are both currently in jail on child neglect charges. Following the report of his disappearance, local, state, and federal law enforcement agencies have initiated search efforts. Meanwhile, hundreds of volunteers are combing the area in a desperate search to find him. Being a parent, I think I, if my child was out there, I would want anybody and everybody out there looking for them. And I got to tell you, it's overwhelming and it's, it broke my heart because you don't realize how hard it is until you actually get out there. Action 2 News tagged along with a group of people searching the area off of Highway 43 near Manitowoc Saturday afternoon. They say they're hoping to find clues and would continue to keep searching until the sun sets. Many of those searching say they see their own children or grandchildren in Elijah and feel the need to do anything they can to help. Obviously, at this point, they have not yet found Elijah. But on March 18th, police announced that they actually found Elijah's red and white blanket located on Goodwin Road, about 3.7 miles from the home where he went missing. They also said that they're on the lookout for a beige 1997 Nissan Altima, which may be connected to the case. The car is in their possession at this time, but they asked that the public be on the lookout for a surveillance video that may show this car on February 19th between the hours of 2 and 9 p.m. So, if you happen to live in the area and have a ring doorbell camera or any other kind of surveillance system, please just look at the history to see if anything was caught. As of right now, this situation is obviously not looking good. Police won't say whether they believe this is an abduction or a murder, but obviously, based on what we know about his mother and her boyfriend and how they treated him, I don't feel good about this. But at the same time, I'm hoping that maybe because they treated him so badly, Elijah escaped the house somehow and is terrified and hiding somewhere. 
but obviously as more time passes without finding him, the hope that he's still alive is getting less and less likely. Even if he did escape, the weather being so cold and having no food or water just does not look good for his chances of survival, but I still have hope and I want everybody to keep his name in your mind, share his story, and stay on the lookout for him. Do police believe Elijah left that residence on his own? Again, I can't speculate. I will say that again, when we're talking about the Amber Alert that we put out, people wanted me to speculate on an abduction versus endangered. At this point, what I do know is a child was missing in cold temperatures, you know, winter temperatures in relatively little clothing and possibly a blanket. That's what we're searching for and we'll continue to search for until I get some answers. To anyone who may have information about Elijah's whereabouts, we plead with you to please come forward your courage, your compassion, your willingness to speak up may hold the key to Elijah's safe return. Elijah Vu was only three years old when he disappeared. He is described as being white with brown hair and brown eyes. He's about three feet tall and was last seen wearing gray sweatpants, a dark colored long sleeve shirt, and red and green dinosaur slip-on shoes. He has a birthmark on his left knee. Anyone with information regarding Elijah's whereabouts is urged to contact 844-267-6648. The reward for information is currently at $40,000 as of the time of recording this video. So that is all of the information that I have on today's case. Obviously, this case is horrific and heartbreaking. I'm trying to hold out hope that somehow Elijah is found alive. I don't know, but I'm trying to be hopeful. All I ask is that you share Elijah's story, try to get more eyes on this case, and get more people searching for Elijah. He deserves so much more than he was handed in this life. I'm so sick of these parents who just abuse their children and treat them like trash. They know nothing about how to raise a small child, not understanding the normal behavioral issues that a toddler will go through. Every toddler will have certain behavioral issues and it's up to the parents to correct those behaviors. I'm so sick of people treating the gifts that our children like trash. Instead of reaching out for help or finding resources to make their child's life better, for God's sake, to see if a family member or a friend will take them before you just decide to punish them like this. I am hoping that Elijah is found so that he can be reunited with his family who will love and care for him and understand him, but as of right now, based on what we know, and this is just my opinion, I think that Jesse had something to do with his disappearance. I think he harmed him and I think both he and Katrina know exactly what happened and just aren't saying anything. I'm hoping that Katrina will say something eventually if she wasn't actually involved but just knew about what Jesse was doing. Maybe she's scared of Jesse for how he treated her in the past, those 10 years ago when he was trafficking her. I don't want to make light of the situation, but she obviously went on to date him and trusted her child to be alone with him. So obviously there was something there. It, honestly, I don't understand the situation at all. I don't understand why you would date someone that trafficked you. I don't understand any of this and I don't understand how you can treat a child like that and send him off with someone that you know has a criminal history. None of it makes sense, and I'm hoping for the best in this case, but again, the more time that passes without answers, the more grim the outcomes are looking. But that is where I am going to end today's video. Now I want to know what you all think. Do you think that we're going to find Elijah, or do you think Jesse and Katrina harmed him? Do you think we will have any answers soon? Let's discuss this and any other thoughts that you have in the comments below. If you like this video, please make sure to go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week. Don't forget to turn those notifications to on so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Make sure you follow my Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and Spotify. All will be linked down below. And if you have any case suggestions, please make sure to fill out the Google form, which is also listed down below. With that, I hope you have an amazing week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.